you can see it. All the lines are inconsistent. It's easy to make that stuff. It's not easy to get the perfect sprinkle of awesome. talk about consistency for a little bit because i think Ooh. that's been a huge force behind your success so things yeah. like the shade of orange that you use a lot the fonts the the thick line style that's a big one and i know you, you say you did you didn't invent it but you did kind of bring it back from the dead modernize it and now it's like a, it's a signature look so i mean it's a point where if i see something with thick lines i'm like okay that's either draplin or someone ripping <laughs> off his style not that i've ever done that myself i swear but <laughs> but uh how did that particular style develop for you and how has consistency helped you in your career well the answer is a little weird because it's not necessarily a set of decisions versus it being more of like a set of limitations. My first website that I built in like 1997, and I remember my friend telling me like, there's like seven or eight base fonts, you know? And at the time there's a new one called Verdana and there was something called Trebuchet and there was Helvetica Bold. And he explained to me, he's like, you know, you only get to pick from Times New Roman and these, these seven or whatever, eight of them. So I was like, well, how about a Kabul? That's a modernist typeface. It's clean. It's logical. It works. It's great. That's enough for me. Right? And that's a, limit, a limitation. But I would have picked that in my regular life anyway. And then it's like, okay, well, where does Helvetica Bold work? You know, want a dark space or a white space? And then, wow, this little pop color, you know. I can, I can make my logo a certain color, you know? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know, what, what you're getting at here is the, basically the same shit that you guys sell to people for a nice consultancy fee. I was learning because I didn't have a lot of options. That's, and then you step back and you're like, I didn't even need all that other tricks and stuff. It turns out my new site is Helvetica bold on, on kind of like what we're looking at right here on a dark gray background with white. And that is it. Now, the color that you see jumps out of the products and the things and the stuff and, the, you know, some crowd shot from, you know, Louisville. It comes from a place of like, okay, you get you only get to use a couple cards in the deck and you better use them in a good way. And by the way, that's exactly what we do for brands. You know, it's exactly what we do. Like, you don't need to use 52 cards in the deck. Just use this this way. And here's how we're going to teach you how to use it. All right. And that starts with a good logo and then a couple of typefaces and so on. Okay. Because you know what's going to happen. If you go to a little restaurant right now across the way, they're going to be using 51 of the deck cards in the deck because they, they, you know, they did 51 projects over 51 years. And then every year they made a new placemat, a new sign and a new something. And before you know it, they're all different things. So I, I, I don't know where, where that comes from, but it was like, once you lock into this is what I have, it starts to design itself. And it starts to be something that you can rely on, even in the default situation. Oh, we only get Helvetica. Let's make it look like we picked Helvetica. That's good design, right? You're working with these sort of limitations. So we were building the site last summer and I gave him a bunch of comps and stuff. And the guy was sort of like surprised. I mean, he knows my deal, but he was like, hey, you, you, I mean, you do understand we can put any typeface in this thing now. And I didn't need to. Because the brand is the brand. And if it's more stable that way, all the better, you know? And those are good decisions. So you see that. You see that out there, you know? Uh, they could do whatever they wanted, but the they, they went sort of a more strategic route and worked with things that work. And, and that, I think that's when you boil all this stuff down. It's like, after a while, it didn't matter what I plugged into the system. It was brought to you by orange, gray, and whatever, and this way of talking about it. And it, like I said, you land on a couple things and then um, you learn to like sort of hide behind those and let them guide you. And that's, you know, what, what I try to, you know, because people will say, well, how'd you know this was right for you? Well, you didn't, but I got lucky. But I was also looking at like, you know, at that time in the late 90s, because if you remember, you remember, like it was about damaging type and damaging the form and prison mm -hmm. it all up and make going as ape shit as possible and jaggedy little things and art, 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 nothing wrong with any of that. 
But what about the communication? Well, they were fucking with it. They, they, this is what a computer allowed you to do. Hmm. But I wasn't even interested in that. I was interested in like, <laughs> I don't know, vintage brochures of train timetables. Shit that worked mm-hmm. 40 years ago, still work now. Um, that wasn't very fashionable. I got picked on by, you know, these contemporary, you know, these, these, uh, on the, on the, on the foreskin of, 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 of contemporary, <laughs> uh, 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 graphic design, man, fuck off, man. I see those guys now and they, they have to hide all that shit because it was just, it's like masturbatory, you know, just like, just it's stupid. You know, it's, it's, it's just so ephemeral. And then when it got down to the meat, can you make a catalog for us? Then they have to show some of that. Well, that's where you get paid. There's nothing wrong with that. So it freaked me out, you know, this like how easily people were led away from being like just strong communicators. Ooh, here's this flashy thing. Mm. I'm going to put that all over my work. That's going to go away in a year, man. What are you doing? You know, I'm not going to hire you. For- I remember one time in one of my classes, I was in Minneapolis. I'm a big Cabela's fan because the shit fits, you know, you know, you two, <laughs> you two going there and going, should I get the large or the medium? You motherfuckers. You enjoy that. <laughs> you know, Aaron Draplin over has like, yeah. Can that cover a cord of wood? Oh, it can. Well, that would make a t-shirt for me. Yeah. Great. You know, Oh, it's down rigging equipment for the U S open, you know, those big sales and shit. Anyway. Yeah. So, that's it. so I remember when I was in school and they were like, well, what kind of job do you want to have? What are you going to use your talent with? And I was like, oh, I'd love to work for Cabela's. Mm. And that was not mm. a good answer. You know, it was like, mm. why? Because it's, you're chained to a desk and you make a catalog. And I remember thinking, fuck, man, I'm going to get fifth color welcome hunters orange and just kick that thing's ass, you know, <laughs> camo and all this. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a really good lesson because it showed you how removed these people were from reality, which was like the day that we get out of this big highfalutin, high priced uh, Minneapolis college of art and design school, you got to pay that loan back and you're not going to pay that loan back by, you know, basically um, um, doing all this frivolous self-expression bullshit art. (laughs) You're going to pay it off by making catalogs and pages and things. And I was all right with that. It was, it was better than washing dishes up in Alaska. Now, I know that's kind of reductionist, you know, because that's what my experience was. I'd go to Alaska and make money to buy computers and things. And now I had sort of elevated myself to this, like, go get a job in an agency. But what happens when you go to one of those agencies and the guy's mean to you? That happened to me. And I he was having a bad day. What happens when you go to that agency and you look around and you're like, Fuck, man, they're all tucking their shirts in. What if I come here and I don't want to tuck my shirt in? Fuck, I don't want to be around. I I tucked my shirt in for when my grandmother died. And I untucked it halfway through because looking at my stupid (laughs) uncles, whatever. So, I mean, that's the one time. You know, it's like, I don't want to be a part of that. You know, it scared me away from like whatever the successful stuff was. So I'm, you know, whatever. It's, it's, you know, when you, when you step back from all this stuff, it's like, you know, that shapes you in a weird way where then you're not afraid to work within limitations. You're, you know, it's okay to go get the regular job because what I knew clearly, whatever job I had, that's just to pay the bills, pay back my school loans. When that's done at five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, I got the whole night to go make my own shit for me. And I did. I remember my first job here in Portland, Oregon, uh, a place called Cinco, awesome little place. You know, doing beautiful work for Nike, Adidas, um, Nixon watches, Gravis shoes at the time, action sports stuff. But I got to go right into the fray of that. And everyone would go home around five and six and seven and stuff like this. The owner was an amazing graphic designer, this guy named Kirk. He would stay very, very late. And so would I. And I would work on my projects. That's By the way, that's out of range from what you're getting paid your salary. But if there was no one there, I would stay there just because it was facilities to use. And I would screen print and make stuff and or had my amp in there and play my guitar as loud as I could. You know, like I couldn't do that at my little shit apartment, you know, 20 blocks away. So that was in me. Now, listen, other buddies are going out and chasing ladies. 
Other buddies are going and chasing dudes. Other people are going out to Pilates and they're going to uh, raise families and they're going to watch bands and things. I just, I use that time to build, build this little sort of like a uh, weird little DDC thing. You know, I started getting freelance and freelance and freelance. And that's when I was allowed to jump out of that. You know, I was allowed to jump out of that and go on my own. And that was in 2004. And I, I just, that would that, that wouldn't have happened without that weird, ambitious quality to like, say, I, this is just a hobby. I mean, yes, you make a living, but this really is just a hobby. And um, if I can just keep it right there, you know, that what happened was whatever I could make at my salary was less than what I was making on my own after I got out of work. When it tipped, that's when I went on my own, you know, my first year mm -hmm. on my own. I mean, I'd love to tell this because it's the truth. Uh, but I made $65,000 a year at my salary job, man. And that was a shit whack of money, you know, 2002, you know, looking like this, with whatever I had, it was great. I was getting ahead. First year on my own, I broke 200 grand. Wow. Now, what that means is you got to pay a fuckload of taxes and other things and stuff. <laughs> but instead of like pissing it all away in a new something, you know, you know, truck or a RV or a cabin or a boat or any of this kind of stuff. No, I paid off all my stuff. Start paying my house down. So, okay, you know, whatever instinct there, it's like, if I never got ahead, I would have known how to handle it. When I started to get ahead, I capitalized in small gains, little tiny little things. Pay off that school loan. Pay off that HELOC. Remember, you're going to buy a house, you get a, a home equity line of credit. I paid that motherfucker, it's 35000 bucks. paid it off. Ooh, what's the next one you got to pay off? Now your school's paid off, your HELOC's paid off, you don't have to do the mortgage insurance. How much? Can I pay off the fucking loan for the house? Oh, yeah. It's 165,000 bucks. I paid it off. And the little punk rock girl that worked at Wells Fargo told this story a million times. She had tattoos under her little blouse. Her blouse would have to come to here. And if you pulled it back a little bit, you can see her little punk rock koi fish and shit. But she had to wear it there because she was like in a bank. I remember her telling me like, Aaron, pay it off. Pay it off. Because they're going to like sense that you are getting ahead and they're going to try to sell you a cabin on the Oregon coast or they're going to, you know, up at Mount Hood or whatever these things are on Portland here, or they're going to, you know, get some cool RV to go motorcycles and shit. And it's like, you know, you can afford these things now. I can, you know, I didn't, I still don't even know that. And, and when I paid that stuff off, I got free. I got free. Like what? I had no debt. I haven't had any debt. You guys since 2009. They're in, uh, 10 or 11. That's incredible. Like debt free. That's debt -free. fantastic. Listen, the shop I'm sitting in, I got a little bit of debt, but I paid for it with cash. And then we had to get a loan so I could like whittle it down using it. I don't know how do we do it with an S corp. You know, my accountant kind of like slapped mm -hmm. my hand and said, you don't, no, no, no. You can't, you're not allowed to just, I paid these installments to the builders, you know, 50 grand times five. And it was like, I just out of my savings and I paid for this fucker. And then we got a loan for it. And now I pay, you know, 1500 bucks a month because we use that to write off. I don't even know how she does it. I just kind of, like I said, it's like, well, you know, I was trained. Do not, do not buy what you can't afford. You know, and I stuck to it and um, it's allowed me to help a lot of other people now, you know? So I got a little tiny mortgage on this and everything else is paid off, you know? So that was the goal, you know? I mean, that, nice. how does that, how does that handle, yeah. how does that form that into a branding, you know, the branding outlaw? But I mean, the idea is the, the, is this, I was so proud to go tell that to a kid who was fearful, scared, freaking out. How am I going to do this? You know how you're going to do it? You're going to get a job working at fucking Cabela making catalog pages. Damn it. You're not going to do it being in fucking Hollywood or some shit, you know, whatever. That's, one out of a thousand designers get to go do the big, 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 cool job. Understand that even when they get to that level, <laughs> you're still owned by somebody. Maybe you can pull this off at your own pace working for something local. You know what I mean? So, because that's realistic. Yeah. Well, I think it, I think it does fit into your brand because you, um, you bring a blue collar work ethic to what's pretty much a white collar yeah. job. Yeah. 
it comes a little misleading though, you know, because then these kids are like, you know, you know, Aaron Draplin's up on the high beam with all the other guys, you know, working on the high beam. And my fucking hands, Nick, are so soft. Look how soft my hands are. Yeah. They're, they're moisturized. Yeah. Yeah. My mouse finger mm-hmm. clicks at a certain level. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, like, I'm really careful to be like, yeah. it's pretty white collar when you have someone help you with all your money management. You know what I mean? Like, it's pretty yeah. Like, no. yeah what i mean is like it's almost like yeah, the punk yeah. rock thing it's like not how how you look it's not exactly the kind of job you have but the ethic that you bring to it why was it why was it when i had my first job these little numb nuts mm-hmm. the moment the client pushed back and said now we're gonna make it suck and you gotta stay mm-hmm. late Everybody was up in arms. I just was like, fuck it. All right. Get us dinner. I'll stay late. Let's get it done. I committed. That might be mm-hmm. a little more blue collared, you know. All right. How how do we dig the hole? Oh, the hole you get a you, you get a shovel and you start digging until you get to the end of the hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just get it done. You know, these mm-hmm. kids, the moment that they had any bit of like friction. Because they went through, they were coddled mm. in school, man. They were coddled. And it was like, I just wasn't. <laughs> when I went up to Alaska and worked all those summers, it's not necessarily blue collar. It's more just like, if you don't do your job, you lose your summer job. You know, that's just all there is to it. So when these guys would be like, oh, they're asking us to stay late. Fuck off, Ethan. You play ping pong all day. <laughs> what, what is, what, where does it add up to you? This isn't hard. You haven't been outside in seven months. Mm-hmm. You know, like these little funny anecdotes where I'd just be like, man, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm going to let's get it done. Let's get the thing done right. Let's sell it and get on to the next damn project. You know, and by the way, when I got out on my own, I could exhibit that stuff at a vicious pace. That's when I got ahead. Oh, you want me to get it done today? All right, get your checkbook out or whatever, you know, or, or you put me up against the, this timeline. All right, you want it done by Monday? I, I had any number of logos on on a Friday and have something ready to go by sun, Saturday. Have them wrestling with it on Sunday and have that fucker ready by Monday morning. And you know what I got for that? Four and five grand. And that adds up. That adds up. That's a laptop. That's a ticket plus a plane ticket home, plus some money from my mom, whatever, you know, I still do those, right? But the idea that some of these other little fidgets who would hear that, oh, no, 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 I need six weeks, man, you know, say yes more than you say no. That's one of the big the big tricks here, mm-hmm. you know? When these things land in your lap, size it up and say, what, I want on Netflix all weekend, you know, and just like lay around or sit down with your laptop and then watch Netflix and then laptop it and then wait a minute. This kind of shit, it's not that hard, man. And that's that that is still to this day. I'm like so proud to see some friends out there really killing killing it. Um these guys called the Young Jerks, uh incredible work. Um Clark Orr and Brittany Regan, they they do this thing called Hellcats. They have their own little shop now. Um I'm just so proud of them because it really is on their terms. I, for all I know, young jerks are making mountains of cash. I hope they are, Dan and Dan, because they, they employ a lot of other good kids and they're all very healthy and they, they take good care of each other. And it's, it's just, it's a great little thing. And you can't tell if they're charging big bucks or letting some shit wiggle through because the work is so strong. They look like they're enjoying it. You know what I mean? And, and, I try to promote that same kind of vibe when someone hits me up to work on some concert thing or whatever. It's Chris Stapleton or any of these things you know, have been pretty cool. In the same respect, when I'm working on something where there's no money, that is also a little pile, a little pot of gold because then you can do something really cool and show it to the world and then sell it to the Chris Stapletons, mm-hmm. you know, because how would you even know that you're even capable of that? You know what I mean? You know, it's like yesterday I had this thing come out for uh, Kodiak Cakes. Saw that. You know, me and yeah. You know, me and Zach Efron. Zach Efron's got a six pack. I have a fifty gallon drum. <laughs> we add that together. It's about a fifty point six. <laughs> I don't know what to say about this guy, you know. But he's concerned about grizzly bears. You know, mm-hmm. that's cool. You know what he's got for on his Instagram? Is fifty five million followers. Ooh. You know, yeah. that's like California to follow. 
you know yeah. what I mean, or something like that, in in Oregon or whatever. And why it's a whole West Coast file. Okay, you know whatever. It's uh, it, it, it's a sixth of our country. That's amazing. And I come in there with a quarter mil, which is pretty good. Mm-hmm. And we were help, we were able to sell a bunch of stuff that helps you know raise stuff. And by the way, they came to me and just said, just do what you do with the thick line thing. You know, to answer that thick nice. line thing, to kind of chew on that a little bit. Why I love that stuff so much is because when they were making things back in the day with limitations, it was hard to just print. And by the way, they were having to like paint all that stuff. So when you see these thick lines, it's because they were taking tape and like laying mm-hmm. the tape down and then like shooting that. Mm-hmm. And it was consistent. And it would be one, you know, I don't know, one pica line all the way through, whatever the hell they were using. And they make such, you know, they made such great work with that stuff. There's lessons there, you know, why do we forget that we could do that, you know, and be really simple, you know, here's something from, you know, the seventies and it's just beautiful. It's hard, maybe hard to kind of see, but it's like that one consistent line, this will forever, not only does it work this size, but it works right there. And it's like, that's graphic design, Mm. you know, and we forget that. Mm. So for me to exploit that stuff and say, all right, you know, these are the things I like, you know, Mm -hmm. for me to exploit that thing, it still works when you see this thing at a junk store. It still works when you see it on someone's bill that they never quite updated from like the, even the eighties, they're still using this thing floating around, you know, it's bell telephone. And they understood that that long ago that that thing had to have that kind of longevity so there's something to that stuff. Now, when I get to make a grizzly bear thing, that's just start with an outline and work your way and refine it, you know, and like I start to look at things, you know, Matt, Matt I'm looking at you and I, you know, I know how to like attack your face in a certain kind of way with about seven or eight lines. Mm-hmm. So you learn how to like refine with that stuff, you know, and it's like, if I can use that little technique to go and help raise money and get a little buzz making it, I'm, that's the best. You know, and yeah. I, they paid me a little bit too. Um, but I will say, like you were kind of alluding to before, like, ooh, some people are using some of this shit. Hey, man, <laughs> I certainly didn't invent it. I did not invent it. But I've tried to just unearth it mm. as, as one mm. of the many ways you could go make something. Here's a little something in my field notes. Um, I got to work for NASA. And you can see just mm. like, it just says Madrid. That's the Madrid. Uh, there's three of these big these big dishes okay. and they have them mm-hmm. all over the world, right? Mm-hmm. Three of them. And they kind of triangulate to like cover, you know, the, the entire thing. Anyway, now is that, you know, here's the deal. <laughs> when we were traveling and we were going to all these national parks and, you know, stuff and things, and you roll into the national park dinosaur national monument or something where in Utah, and there we are, and it's all the rock and the and and the and the, and the and the fossils and the stuff. And then you're in the gift shop, and you're like, "Oh, it's arrived. It's nothing new. It's been a couple of years." But when you go to South Dakota, they got the thick lines. Some you know, some numb nut made that thing into the South Dakota. And I, you know, what are you gonna say? So what happens is when friends are traveling, they call me and say, "Did you see what they did to the Everglades?" <laughs> well, yeah, it's out there. It's out there. What are you gonna, you know, what are you gonna, what am I gonna say about that? You know, it's like if maybe I help push that along, cool. But what kind of megalomania drives megalomaniac drives around looking at the backs of a Subaru going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who gives a fuck? Put a tape measure up to the lines. (laughs) And yet, I always have something to add. Here comes something horrible. You can tell the lack of craft. Mm. What you just said. Mm -hmm. What you just said. When you start going and measuring shit, you can see it. All the lines are inconsistent. It's easy to make that stuff. It's not easy to get the perfect sprinkle of awesome, Mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, that's where it's like you see it and you're like, okay, this isn't all that rough. But if you're going to do it, you got to figure out the way to do the waves the right way. And your line is thicker than your inner lines. And it all looks like shit. And by the way, you know... Life is good t-shirts for the whole family. You know that garbage? You know, like, ah, yeah. mom, that one, dad, that one. <laughs> you know, that's what you're out there fighting out. If that stuff can overtake some of that shit, well, then fine. You know, because it will, it will go away. 
it will go away. And it'll be some other form and some other little thing. When we were kids, it was one shit little seagull that said Daytona Beach. And it had the same little graphic. And then when you went to, you know, I don't know, somewhere over by, you know, Corpus Christi, they just changed it to be Corpus Christi. And then when they went up to Myrtle Beach, they put Myrtle Beach. And we didn't know any different because there wasn't <laughs> internet to check it out. They used to mm-hmm. travel with that shit. So now when I was talking to these little tchotchke places, you know, we're on these curio shops and like, how does it work now? Oh, they send us a link. We go look at a PDF online and we pick from our stuff. And if we want, we can put the name of our curio shop in this little thing. It's like, I get it. You know, I get it. You know, it's the same old racket. You know, here's the deal. I can't worry about that shit. I'm going to make my own shit and then die someday. Yeah. All right. Hopefully a nice person along the way. <laughs>